so this question always uh, causes a lot of controversy and, and, and people are, are very emotionally involved with it. I want to be very explicit, very clear. I want to be very, very uh, precise in what I'm saying. And I want everybody to listen carefully. Those of us who believe in the Quran, I'm addressing Muslims now. Uh, it is very clear from the Quran that one of the many, many, many sins that a Muslim should not do is that of engaging in intercourse in sexual relations outside of marriage. And our religion has forbidden extramarital and premarital intercourse. Then how can anybody believe that same-sex intercourse is something that is ethical and moral in the eyes of our Creator? If even premarital intercourse is considered to be something that is immoral and worthy of sin, then surely uh, engaging in same-sex is a similar, if not a worse, crime in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is really no controversy in the 14 and a half centuries of our ummah. No alim has ever and no person has ever justified this act as being moral and Islamically permissible. And the story of Lut alayhi salam is very clear in the Quran. There's no question that the people of Lut were guilty of multiple crimes, but their predominant crime that is associated with them multiple times is that of same-sex relations. And so we cannot simply dismiss the story and say, well, there was no point in revealing it or it was figurative or whatnot. The story is explicit and the Quran is very clear and there's unanimous consensus in this regard. However, with all of this, we also need to be very clear. What is forbidden in our religion is the action, the action of intimacy outside of marriage. What is not forbidden, the Sharia does not forbid feelings of the heart. The Sharia does not encourage, but it doesn't forbid. What your heart lusts after, i.e. what your sexual persuasion might be, what your fancy might be, what you lust after, the Sharia will not punish you based on the feelings of the heart. And so if somebody comes to us from the Muslim community and says that, uh, and this has happened to me many times, somebody comes and says this email or even directly that, you know, Sheikh, I can't help it, but I am attracted to the same gender. I am gay, I am homosexual. So I say to this person, look, if you find your inclinations to be of to the same gender in a sexual manner, Allah will not punish you for the feelings of the heart. Allah will not punish you. And the question of nature versus nurture is a secondary question and perhaps if we have more time in another, another lecture we can get there. But it is frankly irrelevant from a legal perspective. Why this brother or sister feels this way is a separate question. They are not allowed to act upon the impulse or the urge. Just like a pyromaniac who wants to burn things cannot go and burn things. Just like a kleptomaniac who wants to steal things cannot steal things. Just like I as a normal heterosexual male is attracted to a woman who's not my wife and I find her beautiful and lustful, I'm not allowed to act on that and I have to control my gaze and I have to control my emotions and I have to not act on it. Allah will not punish me if I found a woman attractive. Allah will call me to task if I allowed that attraction to affect my actions, to stare without lowering the gaze, to flirt, to talk, to touch, to astaghfirullah kamid zina. That is where the sin is incurred. But the feeling of the heart, Allah will not punish me for finding somebody attractive, male or female. The point is what our feelings are in the heart must be controlled. So if a Muslim finds himself or herself having same-sex impulses or attractions, we say to them, you are no less of a Muslim simply because you feel this way. In fact, if you battle those urges, then wallahi, you might be a better Muslim than me because your urges are more difficult maybe and you have to be, have more of a battling within yourself. So simply because a person has same-sex desires does not diminish their iman or their faith or their status of Islam. If they act upon it, we say to this brother or sister that look, you have committed a sin and repent to Allah and I'm a sinner, you are a sinner, we are all sinners. Repent to Allah, leave your way and Allah will forgive you. And even if they are persisting in this sin, we keep on making dua for them that Allah Azza wa guides them. There's no point being harsh or mean or nasty or cruel. We don't want to cause them to leave the faith. Wallahi, I commit sins. This brother commits sins. Maybe his sins are 
of a different nature than mine. But in the end, we are all sinners. And as long as they want repentance and they're coming to the masjid for spiritual guidance, then we must always accept their coming to the masjid just like we would accept a drug dealer. An alcoholic comes to the masjid and he wants to be forgiven. Now, where do we draw the line? Where do I draw the line? I draw the line at somebody who wants to spread this idea and wants other people to follow him. We say to this person, brother or sister, we don't allow this in our masjid. If you want to preach and call to this, then feel free to open up another center, do whatever you want. This is the Western lands. Nobody will harm or touch you because we're not allowed to do that. That's your business to do that. But we do not approve of people coming and preaching to others this understanding of Islam. If they're doing it in their private lives, it's between them and Allah. If you find out about it, give them personal advice, but there's no need to treat them any harshly or differently, just like, as I said, a drunkard or a drug dealer, you would be compassionate and merciful. And wallahi, brothers and sisters, I am a sinner and you are a sinner. Why should people judge me for my sins? It's between me and Allah. But where do we draw the line? That people who are justifying and wanting others to follow what they are doing and calling others to it, we say this is not something that we will tolerate in our faith communities. But the laws of the land allow you to do what you want. And as we live in these lands, of the West, we will not tolerate anyone of our community physically harming uh, this person. We will speak out against it because that is not what our Sharia requires us to do when we are residing. Uh, we have to obey the laws of the land, but we also have the right to criticize verbally. Just like they have the right to do what they're doing legally, we have the right to criticize morally, and we shall not compromise on this one issue. That. We do not believe this lifestyle is healthy. We do not believe it is spiritually uplifting. We do not believe it is something that will in and of itself lead one to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah forgives all sins to the one who repents. And we ask Allah azza wa to guide us to the straight path and to guide everyone who is a sinner to the correct understanding of Islam and acting upon it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to uh, manifest and magnify our good deeds. وجزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته